Hello everyone, Abdur here with some big news. So earlier today, NASA released the first image from the new James Webb Space Telescope. Now for anyone who's been following the news, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched in December 2021 and after months of testing and of course the travel time it took to get to Lagrange Point 2 on the other side of the Earth from the Sun, it's finally released its first image and I have to say my mind was blown. Uh, this image is way beyond anything I had expected and just seeing how much more detailed the images are than even the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to go into some more details about what it is that we're looking at in that image. But first of all, I want to give you a short history of the James Webb Space Telescope. So the James Webb Space Telescope was originally planned around the same time that Hubble was launched in the uh, early 1990s and after almost 30 years of planning and development it finally launched in December 2021. Now you might be wondering why is the James Webb Space Telescope such a big deal? Why is it better than the Hubble since the Hubble is also in space? Well one reason is that the James Webb Space Telescope sees the universe in infrared light so it can look through a lot of the gas and dust that obscures our view of the distant universe. So it does a much better job in that regard than the Hubble Space Telescope can do because the Hubble Space Telescope primarily looked at the universe in visible light and a bit of near infrared light, whereas the James Webb Space Telescope it is primarily an infrared telescope, but it can also see into the red and even the yellow part of the visible light spectrum. So that's going to allow it to see much more distant galaxies than the Hubble Space Telescope could do. And also, it has a much, much larger mirror. So the resolution of a telescope largely depends on the size of its mirror. So the James Webb Space Telescope has a mirror that is 6.5 meters across, whereas the Hubble's mirror was only 2.4 meters across. So the James Webb Space Telescope has a surface area that is about 6.25 times greater than that of the Hubble Space Telescope. So that's going to allow it to see much, much finer detail, much further away in the universe. So it should be able to see some of the earliest galaxies and some of the earliest stars in the universe. And one of the other interesting missions of the James Webb Space Telescope is to get spectroscopic observations of the atmospheres of exoplanets these are planets outside our solar system, so around distant stars, and it should be able to tell us the chemical composition of these atmospheres, and that should help us in our search for extraterrestrial life as well. Now, looking at the image itself, here is the full image, and the first thing you're going to notice is that large galaxy cluster in the center, so that's that lighter colored galaxy. Now, this is a galaxy cluster that is closer to us. This is about 4.6 billion light years away. And this is an absolutely massive galaxy cluster. Uh, but the entire image is actually covering a very small area of the sky. It's about the same size as a grain of sand held out at arm's length. So that is a very, very, very tiny area. But you're seeing these thousands of galaxies in such a tiny area of the universe and everywhere you look it will look like that but coming back to this particular image what you're seeing in the very center is this very large very very massive galaxy cluster and this cluster has a mass of trillions of our suns and it contains many many galaxies now whenever you have such a large concentration of mass in one area what ends up happening is that that mass causes space and time to bend around that, that region of space. And because of that bending or curvature of space-time, some of the galaxies that are further back are distorted and magnified around that galaxy cluster. So that's why you're seeing these, these strands, these bent and distorted galaxies curved around that main galaxy cluster. And there must be hundreds, maybe thousands of these distant galaxies that you notice as curves. And th this is actual evidence of, of the curvature of space-time, which is something that was predicted a long time before the Hubble Space Telescope actually took the first image which, which confirmed the theories. So what you're seeing here are trillions and trillions of distant stars in many, many distant galaxies that are being curved around this central region of mass, this galaxy cluster in the foreground. And what I noticed about this image is that 
you can actually see some detail in these distant galaxies. Uh, I remember seeing the old Hubble Space Telescope images of gravitational lensing and there was really not much detail in those distant lensed galaxies but in the new James Webb Space Telescope image you can see individual star clusters actual features in those distant galaxies and I'm sure coming up we'll see individual stars in these distant galaxies as well uh, which considering some of these distant galaxies are going to be over 13 billion light years away uh, actually, when the light left, the galaxies were 13 billion light years away. They're going to be further back now. But the light we are seeing from them is over 13 billion years old. And the universe itself is only about 13.8 billion years old. And we're expecting to see images uh, of galaxies going back as far as 13.5 billion years. So we'll be looking at some of the earliest galaxies and stars and galaxy clusters in the universe. And this will revolutionize our understanding of the universe very much like how the Hubble Space Telescope did. So I can't wait to see what images NASA is going to be releasing tomorrow. I think they're planning to release four more images and they've announced a list of targets but uh, I can't wait to see what they'll look like. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and I hope you are as well.